Okay, now members, we are going to see the sine and the cosine curves. How we handle these quick functions if you are given some question related to them. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Okay, start with the sine and the cosine curves all have their maximum values at 1 and their minimum values at negative 1. So now, I'm going to try to go in. This means that the maximum value a sine curve can go to is 1, as you see in this shape. And the minimum it can obtain is a negative 1. We are going to see it in these shapes. So, we have the sine curve shape and the cosine curve shape. The sine shape is always something like 0 and ends at 360. If you, for the interval of 0 to 360 degrees. Now, for the cosine curve, it starts from 1 and then ends at 1. At 360 degrees. Now you look at this. Start. The minimum this curve has obtained is negative one. The maximum it has obtained is one. Also, this its maximum is at one, and also this is going to be one. Then its minimum is negative one. So the sine and the cosine curves all have their minimum at negative one and their maximum at one. That's what we mean. You see this curve. Now, differentiate them when you space them together or at once on the same axis. This is how you can see. Sine of 0 is 0, then of course it's starting at 1 or is sine starting at 0. As you are going to see, then this one we are just relating this to this. So, on the interval of 0 to 360, that's how the curve is going to be. So, this is from 0 up to 360. It can go beyond, but we are just ending at 360 degrees. Now, let us go through the examples. Draw a graph of y equal to sine theta for 0 degrees, less theta, less or equal to 360 degrees. Now they are telling us that our theta is starting from 0 up to 360 degrees. Taking theta at the interval of, at the interval of 45 degrees. Now, it means that now, we are going to take 45, 45 degrees, but they are starting from 0. So after 0, you add 45, you get this. From 45, you add 45, you get 9. You add here 45, you get this. You add here 45, you get this. 45, like that, you have to add it on 45, 45, 45. Like that. Now, here they don't give you a scale. Now you have to be careful with the scale. An appropriate scale, for me, on my, I'm assuming this one is on the graph paper. I'm assuming that now on my graph, for every 2, Centimeters, I'm using 0 0.5 on the vertical axis. And then on the horizontal, for every 2 centimeters, these are 2, I'm using it for 45 degrees. Now, I want to know what does each small square represent. Remember, 2 centimeters are having 10 small squares. So, if 2 centimeters are having 10 small squares, if you divide 0 by 10, so that 1 small square is going to be now, this 0 is going to be pushed further. The decimal point is going to be pushed further. To have that meaning, one small square is having 0 0.5, 0 0.05. Then on the horizontal, two centimeters are 45 degrees, meaning 10 small squares are having 45. What about one? Divide by 10, divide by 10. So everyone, every small square is having 4.5 degrees. Now let us start the sketch now. To get now after getting this range, now we need the y. But y, to get y, the first sign of the theta. So here, this is my theta. So sign of theta which is zero, I get zero. We are giving to one the small face. So sign of 45, because it's the theta now here, the value for y is this. Then sign of 90 is one. Sign of 135 is this. To one the small face. You just get your calculator, then you press sign. Now you put it to Five. Then you will get the answer as this. It's going to be negative zero point seven zero seven, but I'm getting it one decimal place. Then the same here, you get this. You press to the calculator. That's how we get this. But these values here. Now we are putting theta. We are putting y against theta. That's why I'm calling this my horizontal axis, and I'm calling this my vertical axis or the y axis here because I'm having y. Only this one you can call it the theta axis. Now, let us start plotting. Zero goes with zero. But because we are plotting a curve on the side, we know it's a shape that it starts from zero on 
that split up both. That's why the side of zero goes with zero. So I plot this point. Then multiply goes with 0 0.7. Now, how do you get 0 0.7 on this? What you do, you get your 0 0.7 on the vertical. Divided by what its small square representing on the vertical. So its small square is 0 0.05. You see that this one is going to give you 14 small squares. Meaning, from here, count 14. Where you reach 14, that's where 0 0.7 is going to be. With it is, that's how we put with it is. So 45 is 0 0.7. So I count from here up to this at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So mine is going to be there. So this goes with this here. So mine is this here, there. When I come now to 90, 90 goes with 1. 90 goes with 1, which is there. Then my 135 goes with 0 0.7, which is already here. I have it already there. Then my 180 goes with 0. We are plotting Y and theta. 180 goes with 0, so 0 is there. And then 225 goes with negative 0.7. Negative. Now, meaning if it's in the opposite, I'm going to count 14, but going down. Right? So 1, 2, 3, 4. This from here up here, I said they are 10. Then I count my 4. They are going to be there. So it's going to be here. For you on your graph, it's going to be very, very accurate there. It's going to be there. You probably use it to start. Then 270 is negative 1. 270 is negative 1. My negative 1 is here. That's where my negative 1 is. Then 315 is here. Then 360 is 0. Then we join this curve using a free hand. So you get your pencil, you start from this point, you join like this. Then up to this point. Then it curves downwards like this. Using a free hand, it's the easiest to cross. Then like this, it comes there. Then it goes like that. With this, so you are done with your protein that graph. And after that, you come and you name it. This is why we call it two side theta. That's the naming we always want. Then they are giving you some questions here. Using the graph find side 20. You come now here and you get side 20, 120. So first of all, we want 1, 120. So it's that our sign 120. It means that now from here, if you compare with this, <coughs> it's that all we need need our theta to be 120 degrees. But these degrees are on the horizontal axis. So you come and measure. It's that if it's, this one is between 90 and the 135. What you do, you come here. You place to get this value, you are just going to say the 120 divided by what its small square is on that vertical. Then you know how many small squares you are going to count. Let me see here. Divide by 4.5. So here I'm going to count 26.7 small squares. So what if I'm to count, I know these are 10, 20. Then 25 in the middle of this, then I do something like so. This is where my 120 is going to be. That's where my 120 is going to be. So this 120 now, you come and read up this value for 120. So my, if I come and I read up this 120 like this, so I'm reading off 120. My 120 degrees are here. This is 120. Then when I reach that curve, I come and read off the value because this value is on the Y. Like this. So meaning I need the value of Y when sine is 120. So what is this value? Sine is in the simple terms. What is Y when the theta is 120 degrees? And me when I read mine, I'm going to get 0 0.8.
and this one actually comes, they ask the orange, they want it. Because our side, the side was relating with Y, that's why side of this, I'm getting 0 0.5. From this graph here, you see this one is going to be 0 0.8. There. Then when you come to this, they are giving us 2 sine of this. So you have 2 sine theta equal to negative. Maybe this is the subject because in the question this part we have. So to me now, sine theta equal to negative a half. So this will be sine theta equal to 0 0.5 at negative. But my sine theta is my y. So my y is negative 0 0.5. Now I want to this. I want to know now the corresponding value of the theta where I have y equal to negative zero point five. So you come to this side. This is your y equal to negative zero point five because this is the y-axis. So you draw the straight line passing through it up to this side. So that is the line. That's where that line is going to be. You draw it passing through that. Was dotted because it's just a solution. Then, where this line touches the curve, we read off these values here. So, you come and read off this value, the first value, where this line is touching this curve. So, that's the first value, you read it off. And also, the second value here, you come and you read it off. You also read off this value here. So there are two values. You read off this value corresponding to that. Now when I read this, it's going to be 220. And this one is 330 degrees. These are degrees. So, so that's what I'm getting me. So mean when y is negative 0.5, we have the corresponding value. We have the theta as 1 and then 210 degrees. Or the other one is theta equal to 2, 3, 5 degrees. So those are the two values we have when y is equal to this. Why? Because this curve line is that this curve at two points, then we read. But this one we must start to read at one point, then we read off that value there. So remember, that's it. That's all we have on this one. We are going to see now on 10 questions when we come to the one of cosine. I wish you well. But before we go, I think we see the shape that it's obtaining is the same shape that we had there. For sine, such as zero. Then we are going to say for cosine. I wish you.